Good evening, fellow writers and friends. Welcome to the February 2022 edition of the Author Showcase Series, A Virtual Experience, hosted by the South Florida Writers Association, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote literary arts and support writers. Visit our website, www.southfloridawriters.org for more information about our programs, benefit members, writers, and the community. My name is Evelyn Benson, and I am here to introduce our featured author. Tonight, we have a treat of poetry and memoir by our featured author, Rita Baron Morrissey, as she presents and reads excerpts from her three books, Poetry, As Close As My Pillow, Footsteps Into the Past, Wind and Whispers, Poetry and Memoir. Rita was born in Columbus, Ohio. Her father was a family doctor. She and her sister grew up being very close to their parents who were children of Russian immigrants. The family moved to Miami in 1950. After marrying and having three children, Rita returned to college, became a registered nurse and earned a Bachelor of Science in social work. This educational background served her well as she found many experiences in nursing, nothing less than profound. You will notice that her poems and essays reflect her personal and family experiences, including some of her most memorable professional positions, being one, a first responder for the 1972 Eastern Airlines crash, manager of a pacemaker clinic for children, a researcher on the forefront of HIV labs at the University of Miami School of Medicine, and as a case manager at the Florida Department of Health, serving special needs and low-income children. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome to the virtual stage Author Rita Baron Morrissey. How many of you liked poetry as a child? Well, I have written three books that would really please a poetry lover, especially children. One is Wind and Whispers, the other is Footsteps in the Past, and poetry as close as my pillow. I'm going to read three poems and you could tell me which one you like the best. When I was a child and went to bed at night, I closed my eyes and wished with all my might that I could visit far off places in my dreams, the oceans, the clouds, any spot I would deem. I would pretend to go anywhere I choose, as far as Holland, where they wear wooden shoes, and meet a Dutch boy named Hans with trousers of blue. He'd have a sister Gretchen wearing a white apron too. Those chunky wood shoes made a lot of noise. I yearned for shoes like the Dutch girls and boys. Then it's off to Switzerland with slopes of snow I am asking if my dolls with me are feeling a glow. Down to Mexico to see a babe in a papoose. Next, I visit the land of Alaska and spot a moose. There are also octopi, turtles, and fish in motion, plus sparkling coal, coal, coral on the bottom of the ocean. Groups of mermaids socialize with glee. I am glad my dreams are there each night for me. Okay, the second poem is called Footsteps. It's after dark at the end of the day. Having had a bath, I can no longer play. I am six 
in pajamas, ready for bed. After a good dinner, I feel well fed. My, birth, my bedroom is at the far end of the hall. Tucked in for bed, I decide to make a call. Can I have a glass of water, I dare to ask. I'm sure my mother is good for the task. Her footsteps I hear as I await the attention. Mom is coming, knowing full well my intention. Will you read a story? I hope for the best. Mother replies, which one? And I tell her my quest. Crispin's Crispian, the dog who belonged to himself. She takes the favorite book down from the shelf and sits on my bed, aware that I am anxious to hear my favorite story and content that my mother is near. Footsteps down the hall were my favorite sounds. I fall asleep with peace that knew no bounds. Okay, the third one is called A Child's Request. Many of us may remember this as small children. Please sit on my bed till I fall asleep. I said to my mother when I was a child, only then could I welcome the dark and fear dragons or creatures so wild. My room will be hushed, no scary sounds will I hear. I'll be safe and protected because my mother is near. The pretend tiny animals in my closet and under my bed will go to sleep too without a word being said. But my dolls who all wake up and come alive at night will have a party and laugh without any light. Mom tells me God is with me and that I am never alone. Tomorrow we'll talk more in a calm, happy tone. Once again, she will sit on my bed while I fall asleep. She is so dear to me. My heart is hers to keep. Well, anyway, there are many, many more children's poems that we can all relate to from our own childhoods. The next one will be um, a more adventurous story of when I was an adult called Ghosts of the Everglades. Eastern Airline Flight 1011 crashed into the Florida Everglades on December 29th, 1972. 101 people died, 75 survivors. The abrupt sound of my phone ringing, ringing jarred me out of a deep sleep at 2.30 in the morning. The call was from Palmetto General Hospital in Miami, Florida, where I was on staff as a registered nurse. The operator said, there has been an Eastern Airlines crash in the Everglades. They are transporting passengers by a helicopter to our hospital. We need all medical staff to come in right away. The jet arrived from New York and crashed at 11.30 p.m., full of people returning from Christmas holidays. It was later learned that a light was not working, which was needed to indicate whether the landing gear was viable, and the crew was involved trying to resolve that issue when the crash occurred. Other complications were also documented. My husband woke up, saw me getting into my scrubs and asked what happened. I explained that there was an airline crash in the Everglades and the passengers are being taken to my hospital. We turned on the television and saw a horrendous calamity of flashing blue and red lights. Also saw hearing sirens that permeated the air. I drove into the night heading toward the hospital Frightening thoughts of facing trauma I had never seen before, except in movies, occupied my mind. I arrived at the hospital parking lot and found it jammed, and rescue crews were all over the place. A guard asked me for ID, so I showed him my stethoscope. He waved his arms, motioning me to, to go in, and I bumped bumper, bumper to bumper with an ambulance. Soon I saw passengers covered in black oil being carried in on stretchers. It was hard to tell where the black oil ended and the wet dirt began. Orthopedic surgery had been going on since midnight. Fire rescue staff were administering oxygen. Some people were desperately looking for family members. The, cha the chaos was mesmerizing. The familiar efficient rituals of our daily routine had disappeared. 
The halls were lined with patients on stretchers. Some had already died. We attempted to relieve severe pain with narcotics. Pediatric and adult medical and surgical ICUs were filled. Some of these re patients required respirators. Other serious cases such as broken ribs that could puncture a lung, internal bleeding, broken legs and arms, concussions and brain hemorrhages needed immediate attention. Many times during the night, a loudspeaker announced, code blue, room so-and-so. Many patients were saved by quick interventions. Others were greater, with greater complications were not that lucky. One patient told me she had an out-of-body experience and saw herself hovering over toward the ceiling, looking down as the doctors worked on her. She described feeling intense peace and comfort, not wanting to return, and then floated down into her body as her life was saved. By noon the next day, I went home feeling a profound exhaustion that I had never felt before. The noises of the night is chaos echoed in my head. I took a shower and tried to rinse off all the stress and anguish from the hospital. I prayed for the recovering patients to survive and heal from this dreadful experience. By the next day, Eastern Airlines had hired all private duty nurses who were available. To this very day, the walls of the lobby of, the lobby of Palmetto General Hospital have pictures of this famous rescue. And also a movie uh, was made out of it um, called um, Ghosts of the Everglades. And you can find it on Wikipedia. I was honored to have been a part of it. Okay, another uh, poem that comes from this book, Poetry as Close as My Pillow, is very dear to my heart and it will appeal to people who are very close to their mothers. As far away as my childhood, as close as my pillow, you are with me. You enter my mind at unexpected moments for undefined reasons, on meaningful occasions, in troubled times and when I am at peace. How deep was my love for you? How powerful of sharing. How intense and limitless was my grief when you left. You were delicate, loving, and beautiful. We laughed, we cried, we cared. Was anyone luckier than we? You were my sustaining force as long as I live. So will you, your loving daughter. Okay, now I am going to tell you a poem about a sister. And if you all have any uh, siblings, I think you will relate to this story. Is a sister a gift or something else? Raised by the same parents in the same home, our lives were very different as were our experiences. For one thing, she was two years older than I was. From a very young age, she made fun of me and teased me in front of her friends. Looking out the window on, one, on a dark night, she would say in a spooky voice, the Big Dipper is going to get you. Later on, she had a beautiful felt skirt in her closet with a poodle on it. This was not as fancy as the clothes I had. At last, we were teenagers and it was Saturday night. Our parents had gone out to play bridge. We were the only ones in the house. There was a fierce competition to use the phone. She got to it first, making me angry, so I almost had a fit. She always told me I was changing for the worse. Finally, she left for college, and I became the queen of the house, at least for a few years. For the first time in my life, I was free from sibling strife. The next one you could relate to if you also had a, a, a sister, a brother, or relative who looked exactly like you. Years ago, when we were in high school, it's called twins. Years ago, when we were in high school, young and free, there was a strong resemblance between my sister and me. Since we looked nearly alike from the start, it was often difficult for anyone to tell us apart. Sometimes we switched partners on a double date. The guys never knew that they had a different mate. We both wore khaki skirts and shirts of powder blue. Could anyone in our social circle even have a clue? My name is Rita, her name was Jean. 
answering to both names was pretty keen. We sounded just alike on the phone, even if we spoke in a different tone. Her boyfriend asked me to the prom. If I had accepted, it would have been wrong. Anyway, he was absolutely not my speed. Had I gone, Jean would have been angry indeed. Finally, our path took us in different directions as we no longer shared the same affections. This is one last poem that we all may have experienced personally called Grounded. My sister and I were home for the summer, sharing experiences that became a bummer. Way past curfew, we once came in quite late month, and not surprisingly, our parents were irate. My mother said, you are grounded for a period of time. Activities to do at home, you will have to find. Use the sewing machine, make something new. That was the last thing we wanted to do. Take a walk in the mornings when it's sunny and bright. There will be just no reason to think of a fight. We wanted to buy new clothes for sale at the mall, but our wishes were squelched when our friends tried to call. Through the windows, boyfriends hissed, come out. We had a quickie meeting, but with nervous doubt. Being grounded restricts us. We wish to relocate. Next time we'll follow the rules for a better fate. Now the next poem um, relates to when I was a nurse at, uh, at Camp Komen in Cleveland, Georgia. My kids were teenagers and we went and had a wonderful time. It's three o'clock in the morning on a sunny afternoon and summer camp was in full bloom. I wish I was the nurse who was working here, but clinic hours were not very near. My doorbell rang with urgency. I asked, is this an emergency? A lanky 12-year-old boy entered my room, wore blue jeans and showed feelings of gloom. I need a favor as soon as possible. I surely hope it will be plausible. There is a dance tonight after dinner. I desperately hope to be a winner. Will you teach me how to dance so I will at least have a good chance? The radio was sitting nearby. Thus, I thought I would give it a try. I found music that was just right. It sounded bouncy and light. I showed him how to move his body to the song. He caught on fast. None of his steps were wrong. He looked elated and had new zest, feeling assured that he could now do his best. He came back the next day with a smile and reported that he'd won by a mile. This emergency worked out well, and the camper had a good story to tell. He thanked me for the social chance I gave him by teaching him to dance. Excuse me, these are the last, this is the last of the teenage years called Sunday morning. It was a sunny Sunday morning and without any warning, he looked at me during the service, making me feel very nervous. Wide open smile, dark curls, big brown eyes. I could feel his heart trembling, not a surprise. <clears throat> he approached me and extended his hand. I felt warm like I would be needing a fan. He was the first to casually speak. My knees were becoming totally weak. How are you, my friend? Fine, thank you, I did pretend. An older heavy woman appeared. She was precisely what I feared. This is my mother, he proclaimed. She did not even want to know my name. Come along, dear, she said, right out loud. Our almost love affair died beneath a black clap cloud on me. His mother imposed a permanent ban. And so that Sunday, it was over before it began. Okay, and uh, another story um, that, that is in rhyme are something that we all look back on as we get older. It's called the best years. <clears throat> Many years ago, when my children were small, my parents said, 
These are the best years of all. Busy with chores, laundry, and cooking, time passed when I wasn't looking. What happened to elementary and junior high? Those years seemed to rapidly whiz by. Change was constant and it revealed new insights like flower blooms in a field. The stories and memories are so sublime, our lives overshadowed with passing time. The land of Oz and the yellow brick road, we walk on paths that will never grow old. The roller coaster and the Ferris wheel, remember how great they made us feel? The best years are gone, yet not far away. They all live in my heart and are there to stay. Later on, um, after I became a nurse, I also studied social work. And this is a true story of what happened um, along the way. It's called, It's Not Okay to Cry. Jose, a seven-year-old Hispanic boy with big brown eyes, dark curly hair, and the olive complexion was being raised by his grandparents. He is in second grade at school and his teacher was complaining that his behavior disturbs the entire class and he sometimes talks when she is talking and throws erasers. Finally, his teacher arranged for Jose to be seen by a school counselor. Jose sat in a small counseling room waiting for the counselor to arrive. This person finally arrived and he was tall, muscular, with blonde hair, blue eyes, and a friendly smile. The counselor said, hi, my name is Roger. What is your name? He extended his hand for a handshake. Jose responded, shaking his hand, and saying his name was Jose. Why are you here, asked Roger. Jose said, my teacher says I am disturbing the class because I get mad all the time. Do you know why you get mad, asked Roger. Jose responded, no. Roger continued, it is okay to get mad. Is it okay to get mad at home? Jose said, no, and it isn't okay to cry either. Also, my grandfather says big boys do not cry. Jose looked timidly up at Roger and asked, do you cry? Roger responded, yes, I cry. Jose looked surprised that such a tall, strong looking man would cry. Jose continued, when I get mad at home or cry, they don't like me. Do you know what happens if you don't cry? No, said Jose. Roger continued, well, feeling that you are hurt and need to cry is a healthy way of expressing your feelings. If I fall down, sorry, and hurt myself, if someone calls me bad names, I even cry when my goldfish died. Roger could tell that Jose had many unexpressed emotions and that he had a habit of holding everything inside, mainly frustration, hurt, and anger. I told Jose it was important to say, I feel sad, I am angry at you, I feel glad, and most of all, it's okay when you are sad or hurt to express your feelings. Jose sat there and listened. Then Roger said, you have learned to keep in your emotions and not share them because probably your grandparents do the same thing. They receive disapproval from their parents if they share their feelings. Roger continued, plus your grandparents are not going to change. They have lifelong habits but you can change. At that point, Roger introduced the old Jose to the new Jose. He said, the new Jose is going to talk about his feelings whenever he wants. He told Jose it is important to recognize and identify what he is feeling and not hide or avoid it. Jose looked inquisitively at Roger. Roger continued, the next time you are feeling sad, mad, happy, or frustrated, it's okay to say to yourself, I feel mad. Then you feel the emotion and are able to let it out. He continued, what happens when you know you are going to get ice cream? Jose said, I feel happy. Roger said, see, you probably are identifying what emotion you are feeling. Roger knew Jose was a winner. Within a short period of time, Jose learned to express and identify his feelings and even cried if he was sad. The new Jose was the winner.
Well, I wanted to thank everybody for sharing this time with me. Uh, if you would like to buy any of my books, uh, my little booklets, my email is Rita Baron Morrissey at gmail.com. It's R I T A B A R O N M O R R I S S E Y at gmail.com. Or I can be reached at 305 238 4496. Thank you very much for allowing me to share this time with you.